Hey guys, this is Nathan again. In my last video about the keymap, I was just kind of giving a general overview of just kind of broad, big picture stuff. Uh, just kind of give a gist of how the keymap worked. But, obviously, that is not enough information to actually know how to use it in full. So, in these next few videos, I'm going to be working on trying to give you a real overview of the various things in the key map that have changed so that you can actually start using this for real work. Now keep in mind with these videos though that I'm not trying to be prescriptive about this. This isn't like a this is how things should be and particularly when it comes down to the nitty-gritty details of like exactly what key is mapped to what and what mouse button combination key combo is mapped to what. Like I'm sure there's plenty that can still be improved there. But more what I'm trying to look for and set up with this key map is big picture stuff that makes sense, that makes things easier to use, and general conventions that we can stay consistent to throughout the input map so that it is easy for people to take what they know from one area of Blender and apply it to other areas as well. So with that in mind, let's get started. And in this video, I'm going to be covering 3D viewport object mode type functionality. So basically the the basics that most people are usually exposed to when they're getting an introduction to Blender. So to start with, let's take a look at viewport navigation. Now most of this is exactly the same. In fact, there haven't been any changes of existing functionality. It's all pure additions. So everything that you already know about viewport navigation is going to stay the same. So middle mouse drag is orbit, shift middle mouse is pan, blah, 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 blah. You can zoom with control middle mouse. You can use mouse wheel to zoom. You can use a numerical keypad to do top, front, side, and all those various permutations with modifier keys and five to topical perspective, zero for camera view, blah, 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 etc. That stuff is all the same. So what I've added is the ability to access top view, front view, side view type things without a numerical keypad. And I've done that based on an idea that is not mine. It was someone on the Blender functionality mailing list. And thank you very much to that person whose name I have forgotten. Uh, sorry about that. Anyway, but it, it's not my idea at least. <laughs> uh, so the idea is to attach this to the middle mouse button. So everything is already a middle mouse button that's viewport navigation related but we are really not taking advantage of that entire input space. In particular, there's a bunch of modifier keys that we can use in combination with middle mouse that we just don't. So what I've done is taken it so that if, we, if you hold down Alt and drag to the right with middle mouse, it goes to the right side view. If you drag to the left, left view, drag up, it's top view, drag down, it's bottom view, click, it's front view, and double click, its rear view. So this just gives the user very quick access to those basic uh, viewpoints without having to have access to the numerical keypad. And I think that's I think this works really well and it is exploiting an area of the input space that has basically stayed completely empty up until this point. I think there's probably some more that we can do with, do with that input space as well to also have toggle perspective and camera view kind of in those same sorts of things, uh, but I don't know exactly how I, how I want to map those yet. But anyway, uh, the other thing that I've added is using the V key. If you hit uh, if you hit the V key, it will bring up a box select type thing, but it's not actually box select. What, what it is, is it will zoom you in to focus on whatever is inside that box. So this is a really quick way to manipulate your viewpoint if you just want to zoom in on something quickly. It's also a great way to fix situations like this, where your orbit point is way off center from any of your objects, right? You want to be orbiting around this cube, but you're not, because your orbit center is way off there. So if you use the V key, do something like this, centers things much better. You can even do it just on the cube itself, then you're in good shape to orbit around the cube. Is another thing that maybe there's a place we can fit that in with the middle mouse instead, but for now it's on the V key. Anyway, like I said, big picture stuff, not so much specific exact mappings, uh, but this is how it is currently. So the next item on the dockets is selection. So as I mentioned in the previous video, 
I'm switching to left mouse button select. And all mouse based selection tools will involve the left mouse button. That is the idea here. More importantly, well, maybe not more importantly, but also just as importantly, if you hold down shift, it is always add select, regardless of what selection tool you're using. If you hold down control, it's always remove select, regardless of what selection tool you're using. And similarly, without any modifier keys, it's always replace select, again, regardless of what selection tool you're using. Now, there may be some cases where I may where it may be a good idea to kind of break that a little bit. I'm thinking paint select in particular. It can may, might be useful to have that be add select by default, but I haven't really delved deeply into that. But in the vast majority of cases, I think sticking to this convention very strictly will be very beneficial to usability and also to working quickly. So anyway, as I also said in the previous video, drag select is now box select and alt drag is lasso select. Not really sure about the lasso. I don't know how often people really use it. I never use it. I'd be, I'd happily put something else on alt drag or whatever. But um, for now, I have it alt lasso, or alt uh, alt drag is is lasso select. So since selection is left mouse button, what happens to placing the 3D cursor? Well, for now, I've just set it to right mouse button. So right mouse button places the 3D cursor. However, I think that the right mouse button can perhaps be exploited better than that. So this is kind of a temporary thing. Maybe it'll stay this way. But uh, anyway, for now, it's right mouse button places the 3D cursor. Anyway, so now that we know how to select things, the next thing that's really useful to know how to do is how to move those selections around. So previously in Blender, this was G, R, and S for grab, rotate, and scale, and that was awesome. It was this great mnemonic that made it easy to remember what keys did what. However, I don't think those mnemonics are actually important in this case. I think mnemonics are great, and I'm using them extensively elsewhere in the key map, but grabbing, rotating, and scaling are really just as core and frequently used as viewport navigation, pretty much. So I think we can better place them for quick usage, ergonomics, and better access to other tools. So what I've done is I put them on the home row. So grab is F, rotate is D, and scale, coincidentally, is S. And this keeps the hand in the home row position. So if you lay your fingers on the home row, A, S, D, F, it's very comfortable, it's very fast to access those tools. And moreover, your fingers are now surrounded by these other hotkeys. It's this ring of other letters that are around S, D, and F, which we can put all kinds of useful quick to access tools around. So I think this is a big win in many respects. The other thing is that although we've lost mnemonics for easy remembering, we still have a mental device for remembering, which is they are on the home row. If you put your fingers on the home row, it's your strongest fingers your strongest three fingers. Those are grab, rotate, and scale. So I think it's not going to be that much harder to teach people. It may even be easier, and it provides us with a lot of other benefits. So although I do love G, R, and S, I, am, I must say I think it's time to abandon them for something just a little bit better. Uh, now, something that I'm experimentally doing, but I don't know if I'm actually, go actually going to stick with this is that if you have the manipulators turned on, uh, S, D, and F, instead of activating a tool, switch between the manipulators. And I must say, I'm not someone who actually uses the manipulators hardly at all, so maybe this is a terrible decision. I know there's some people that mix manipulators with the tool approach for transformations, and this definitely would ruin that, but kind of my hope and I could be totally wrong about this, so I'm very open to changing this, but my hope is that in general, people that prefer manipulators will happily use exclusively manipulators when they're this easy to access. And that then other people that are just using the, the tool activation approach can use those as well. And this kind of gives a dual usage to the uh, hotkeys. But maybe this is a terrible idea, and I'm happy to throw it out and figure out a different way to make manipulators easier to use. But this was kind of my first thought.
anyway, just experimental, not... Don't freak out about it. <laughs> but that is how it is currently set up. So next up after that is mode switching. And I covered this entirely in the previous video. But I'm, I'm just going to run through it quickly, just as a reminder. So if you hit space, it brings up a menu of the modes that you can switch to on the currently selected object. And you can hit, you can either select it with your mouse, which is slower, or you can hit one for object mode, two for edit mode, three for sculpt mode, four for vertex paint, etc, etc. So basically, just imagine these are numbered top to bottom, and you can hit those numbers. So it becomes space two, for edit, space three for sculpt, space one for object mode, etc, etc. It's very, very fast. It's almost just as fast as hitting tab. So since I've switched mode switching to be on the space bar, where did the operator search box thing go? Well, it is now on tab instead. So if you hit tab, it brings up our handy dandy operator search thing. So if you happen to know the name of the tool that you want, but you can't remember the hotkey or something like that, you can start typing it in. For example, uh, delete, bunch of delete things. So uh, that's it for mode switching. Since I just mentioned delete, might as well talk about delete. So the hotkey for delete is the same, but you will notice that if I select some things and hit X or delete, they just go away. There is no confirmation menu because we have undo now. The confirmation menu for delete stemmed from back in the day when Blender did not even have undo functionality. It's just, it's not necessary anymore. If I want to get this back, I can hit, can hit control Z. So no more confirm for delete because it's just, it just adds unnecessary clicks and it's annoying. And I've actually been using my own key map for most uh, non-animation tasks in Blender for a while now and trying to go back to the old key map is just frustrating because of that reason alone. I keep like, ah, oh, I have to click the menu, that's so stupid. And anyway, so in general, I'm trying to reduce the number of kind of involuntary pop-up menus in Blender. There's definitely places where it's still important to do that, where Blender really cannot infer what you want to do based on the situation. But as much as possible, I'm trying to eliminate those so that it's just a faster, smoother workflow. And this is one example of that. So other than that, uh, there's just a few things to note. Uh, there are no more F keys. So I've stripped out all of the usages of the uh, function keys up top of the keyboard. And the main reason for this is because on certain operating systems, <coughs> Mac OS, uh, they are occupied by the operating system. The operating system just takes them over. It occupies an enormous amount of keyboard real estate in general. But given that it is one of the major OS's, I think it's good to try and shy away from that, especially considering that I think most of those things we can probably do just about as well, maybe not quite as well, but just about as well with other hotkeys as well. So for example, Control O, we open, Control S, we get save, there's a few, other. anyway, but we'll, we can figure all that good stuff out. Then other than that, uh, layer switching hotkeys, I have disabled the one, two, three, four, five, six for layer hotkeys. That's not out of spite. That's not because I think it shouldn't be that way necessarily, but I'm still thinking about it. And I'm trying to approach this kind of in a building the key map up rather than kind of stripping it down sort of way. So I'm kind of adding functionality as I figure out how to put it in. But the basic issue is I'm trying to figure out how can we set up the layer hotkeys in such a way that they will transition ni nicely into a more full-fledged layer system, which I hope at some point we get with Blender. Uh, but maybe I should just add them back in as they are now. Uh, but it does take up the entire number key row, which could maybe be used better for other things, but I don't know. Anyway, but other than that, I think everything else is mostly the same. There might be like a few things here and there that I haven't put into the key map yet that you will discover and be annoyed with. Feel free to email me if that's the case, and I'll try and get those in there. But basically, that's everything else I think is pretty much the, the same as you're already used to. So I hope you will give this a try and see how it feels. <laughs>